that's heavy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to my little piece of paradise that I call the Lone Star Hawaiian Garage. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day out there. We are with the 07 Silverado today, guys. We are answering questions, so many questions over the last few years. Today is a pivotal moment, very excited. Today lies the day that three years and 30,000 miles ago, I installed the cheapest lift kit on the market, all the way from the island of Oahu, Hawaii, to the beautiful state of Texas. What has this lift done to my truck over the last three years? We're gonna be lifting this up, pulling off wheels and tires, giving you an in-depth look at one, why this lift kit is so cheap, and two, is it reliable or even a decent quality? Yeah, we have a lot to go over. But before we dig into it, I'm gonna give it one last test. We're gonna throw about 2,000 pounds into the bed of that truck and drive about 25 miles all the way back home. Can you have this super cheap lift on your truck? and still do truck things. We're gonna find out. Now, before you hop in a truck and head down south to go pick up a load of dirt, check this out, guys. I finished my standing desk. In the last video, you saw a little glimpse of the toolbox and this little frame I was building out of spare wood. I picked up a slaminate countertop and it actually serves as my desktop. And guys, I am so stoked. Quarantine's not too bad when you do have a standing desk in your garage. And guess what? Yes, it does roll and the wheels do lock. So check this out, guys. How cool is that? And we're here. We got the little guy with us today. All right, let's go get some uh, fill dirt. I need fill dirt. Here we go. That's heavy. She heavy. She heavy. Okay, we're underway. Trans temp 183. We'll see how high we get on the way home. Cruising about 55. Truck seems to be holding up pretty well. Trans temp's at 196. We're basically at load capacity for this truck. I think this truck's rated for about 2,000 pounds in the bed. I think it's actually a little bit less than 2,000 pounds. Now we talk, take a yard of dirt, throw it in there. The average yard of dirt weighs about 2,000 pounds. And the N2.0 shock seems to be doing okay. It's sagging big time in the back, which is expected with a load. But it seems pretty smooth. 203 trans temp. We got a nice little bump coming up with this railroad track, which isn't fun. I'm actually really surprised at these shocks. They are rough country branded shocks. You expect rough country to be kind of a cheaper option. Pretty solid, three years old now. Here we go, up and over. Not bad. not win any races but we made it back home guys the truck made it back home it is squatting quite a bit squat nation in the house i don't know that california thing or carolina thing let me know because i really don't know but regardless we have we got our morimoto's there but um yeah quite a bit uh really happy that I actually made it home though i was not sure again this is the cheapest lift kit lift level kit on the market at the time i bought the kit I was paying off school loans. I had just been married. We were trying to get our lives together. I had no budget, but I wanted to lift the truck. I wanted to get bigger wheels and tires. And I did that with this kit. Again, extremely budget friendly, but the question is performance, quality, and reliability. Now I will say this is the first time I've truly tested out these N2.0 shocks. This truck has moved around quite a bit. Like a lot of luggage and couches and moving materials have been in this truck, but not Call it, uh, there's probably like 1,500 pounds in here. I said 2,000. I actually had them decrease the load just a bit because I did not want to, in fact, snap my truck in half. I do not have the funds to replace this. 
So uh, yeah, Squat Nation going on. Crawling out of the truck here. We got a Rough Country in 2.0 shocks. A lot of mixed reviews on these. It is a Rough Country shock. Everybody says it's cheap because it's Rough Country. It's a cheap kit. But I was really pleased with the performance of these. Not only over the last three years and 30,000 miles, these give you a good amount of suspension movement, but it's extremely stiff and tight like a truck should be. Now the actual compression, I almost bottomed out these shocks hitting a few of those bumps. We got our bump stop there, but again, we got a bigger lift block, so we will never hit this bump stop again if we do. We got bigger problems up here. But uh, yeah, Rough Country in 2.0. They made it home, guys. That was the main goal and task. So what I'm gonna do now is back the truck back in the backyard where the dirt is going. I'm gonna spend the next few hours unloading this dirt. It is about 95 degrees out and uh, it's Texas. So that means as it gets later, it just gets hotter and hotter. We'll see you guys back probably in the bright and early in the morning to lift this truck up. The front end of this truck is the potential concern because uh, yeah, we'll go over details in a little bit. Let me unload this dirt. We'll be back in a second. In the darkness for 40 days I've been Well the great news is the truck made it back home yesterday. All the dirt is unloaded. It's a complete mess, but we're gonna pull it in the garage anyways, get the front end pulled apart, show you exactly what three years does to your truck with this cheap leveling kit. And uh, we gotta do a little bit of a truck swap though. The trail boss is coming out, the 07 is coming in, but here's the thing. I need your comments below. Which one sounds better? Is it the 07 Silverado or Wifey's Trail Boss? What do you think? Mine or hers? It's hard to beat that trail boss though. That sounds so good. All right, let's get this thing up in the air, pull the wheels and tires off, get you guys a close look. I've been more certain of truth before. All right, driver side's off guys. Before we take a close look there, I think it's time for some story time because my history with this leveling kit actually is what kind of made this channel to begin with because it's a very entry level kit. You know, you don't need a massive budget to go purchase it. You can do it in your own garage, it's pretty simple. I did it in my own little garage in Hawaii with limited tools. I didn't even have power tools at the time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today on the show, we're gonna turn nuts in a clockwise direction. I did it with just simple wrenches and hammers and screwdrivers. Ya lo hace. Pierna derecha, directo al arco. Golazo! Golazo! And knocked it out. So it's a very cheap and easy leveling slash lift kit. The exact kit that we bought, guys, is right here. So roughcountry.com. This is how I ordered mine years ago. The kit I bought was this one. Three and a half inch GM suspension lift kit. You see right here are two three and a half inch spacers. These three and a half inch spacers basically bolt onto the top of your strut and lift the front end of your truck three and a half inches. Doing so puts awkward angles, what we'll talk about here in a little bit. But in addition to that, it also comes with these blocks here in the rear. So it does also level the rear of the truck because you do go up three and a half inches in the front. If you leave the stock blocks in the back, you have a little bit of a California squat going on on the rear end. So what they give you is a one inch block. I think it's one inches or one and a half inches. And it actually is instructed to stack this block, which is made of like a hard plastic on top of your stock cast iron blocks. One of my original videos I did kind of went viral because I stacked that block and it's highly advised to not ever stack blocks on off-road trucks. It's a very bad idea. So I kind of panicked and ended up buying my own Pro Comp three inch blocks to put in the rear. So we have three and a half inches of lift in the front, three inches of lift in the rear, which creates the stance you're looking at today. Not necessarily the stance, but the, the lift, you get it. In addition to that, you get these Rough Country N2.0 shocks, which we just tested. The shocks did great. $169 free shipping for this kit. It wasn't free shipping for me because I lived in Hawaii at the time, but you know, it got me the lift I wanted. I got bigger wheels and tires, 33 by 12 and a half Toyo Open Country RTs. 
The wheels are Moto Metals 962, 18 by 10 with a negative 24 offset. That negative 24 offset pushes that tread of the tire just about an inch outside the fender well, which is I think is the perfect look. It's not outrageous, it's not goofy looking, but it's a good meaty tire and it makes the truck look pretty beefy as well. That was the overall goal. And then came the next issue. When I finished the lift kit on the truck, the wheels and tires, I wanna call it the placebo effect. Everything was great, everything was awesome. My truck was higher up. I had beefy, meaty wheels and tires. Every time I'd park in a parking lot, I would just walk backwards and just stare at my truck wherever I was going because it was that beautiful. But over time, you start realizing that, hey, this ride quality isn't that great. Every bump and anything in the road felt like an immediate jar to the spine. Because what happens with that lift, when you lift your truck up three and a half inches in the front and change nothing else up underneath, the suspension geometry gets way out of whack. All the lift kit really does is put a three and a half inch spacer between your strut and call it your truck, which basically lifts the front end of the truck three and a half inches from where it was stock. So with that increasing in height, nothing else changed, which means the suspension geometry went from, call it a normal, to an extreme angle. So every time you would hit a bump, the top end of the tire would jet outward. It created a terrible ride. Every time you hit a bump, you felt like something was going to break. It put the upper ball joint at such an awkward angle that I actually was getting worried a little bit that I would shear that ball joint off. If you shear that ball joint off, I'm really hoping you're not going very fast because you'll be end over end on the highway. So what I did instead was step number two of this lift level kit. I went with the forged upper control arms. These are massive. These are so beefy that really there's no worry with any shearing or breaking going on. And what Rough Country did was fix this ball joint angle. Comparing side to side here, this is the new ball joint angle. Again, this is at full droop. It was a night and day difference. It's a little bit stiffer than stock, which is fine, but there's still that articulation. With the old upper control arms, it felt like there was no articulation upward and downward. It was just a jarring effect. But that's what we have there in the front. Now, if I go back to Rough Country's menu for this particular truck, 07 Silverado, it looks like they have in fact updated their overall suspension lift kit with these forged upper control arms. Just take a quick look. So they're priced right now at $399. These do come with the forged upper control arms, which is pleasing to see because that means that Rough Country has realized it and has made the fix. This was not available when I was doing it initially. If you are to buy this kit, if you are to buy this kit, I highly advise get the ones with the upper control arm. But the question is what happens after three years of this kit and 30,000 miles? Looking back under here once again, it looks like there's been a little residue coming out, but the boot is in great condition. Looking all around here, there seems to be very little wear or tear on the upper ball joint boot. Looking up here in these bushings, the bushings look great. I've had it aligned just once when I installed this and it hasn't been aligned again. And I have taken this thing off road. So the upper control arms do can take quite a bit of abuse. I wouldn't say Ford Raptor jumping, but uh, yeah, this thing has lasted me. There's no signs of wear. The only signs of tearing is my strut themselves. These are my stock struts I have. And because this is now called overextended, yeah, the boot that goes around the strut is, is torn to bits. It'll, it'll get dirty in there and start ruining the seals eventually. But at that time, I'll just replace them all together. I'm gonna answer your question right now. The spring is just painted. I pulled it out, I taped it off, and I put blue paint on it. That's another quick tip for you. If you wanna act like you have an expensive lift kit and don't have the money, do what I did, just paint your spring. I get questions all the time on what kit I'm running because I have blue springs. It's just paint. And yes, this is three years and 30,000 miles of paint. It's still on there and it still looks good. Rust-Oleum paint for the win. So over back on the passenger side, we're gonna take another look under here. Lower ball joint looks good. There's no tearing, doesn't seem any wear. That is the stock lower control arm, the stock lower ball joint. The upper ball joint is with the Rough Country kit. The ball joint looks good. Um, just like the other one, it looks like there's just a little bit of residue coming out. Um, just over the last 30,000 miles, that is to be expected. Everything else looks good. This side is pretty torn up too when it comes to the strut, but again, that'll eventually go out. This truck does have 131,000 miles on it, so that is to be expected but everything else just seems solid, guys. Now, if there is a weak point that I am worried about with this kit, it's gonna be the tie rod end. So the tie rod end here, because it is, again, three and a half inches higher, 
This has not been extended. It has not been dropped. It has not been compensated in any way. So basically this is just extended outwards and they aligned it to compensate for the three and a half inches. So what that means is this is at a little more of an interesting angle, not as bad as the upper ball joint was, but it still is at a angle that wear out quicker than it would on a stock truck. But again, we are three years down the road and it's still running aligned and perfect. Now with all this said, this brings me back to the question, which is probably why you're watching this video in the first place, which is, is Rough Country reliable? Is it a good quality and should I get it? If you're watching this video, it's highly likely that you're on the market for a aftermarket lift kit. There's probably a chance that you are on a tight budget, which to be honest, I was at the time. It was extremely tight budget. I did not have money to go throw anything at a pro comp lift. So Rough Country really standed out as the entry level that I could really go and afford at the time. Here are the facts. Rough Country started out as a aftermarket shock company, 1975, and that kept them afloat for about 11 years. After 11 years, they really started branching out into what we know them as today with different lift kits, skid plates, accessories for your trucks, and that's where we are today. I will say over the last few years, there's a lot of talk that the quality has improved greatly. When we think about Rough Country and some of the cheaper lift kit, you think, oh, okay, automatically, hey, they're importing stuff from overseas. All of it's coming from China. It's gotta be crap. Well, hard to say that because every single company imports something from China, whether it's raw goods, knuckle, anything like that. So Rough Country is based out of Tennessee though. In Tennessee, they manufacture these, they put them together and they ship them out to you from our local red, white, and blue US of A. Now that all being said, my experience with this kit, I could not be more happy. I wanted an entry level kit. I was on a very tight budget. The truck has seen several different climates, several different situations, has been off-road and um, slightly jumped accidentally. Uh, one or two times, actually three times to be exact. And everything is still intact and in great condition. I did make the mistake at first by going too cheap by not getting the upper control lock. But again, from what Rough Country is offering today, it looks like you can get the whole kit all together. This is the best entry level kit on the market. If you're looking for something that you off-road, every now and again, you want bigger wheels and tires, you want clearance, and you want just the daily drivability, this is a great kit. I've had no reliability issues. There's no quality issues. They've done a great job with the fit and finish of this product. They also nowadays actually sell some Vertex coilover shocks. Now, if I were to do this all over again and just take a little more budget, I would in fact go for the Vertex. These struts and shocks have 130,000 miles on them. They are due for a change, but I'm not going to because upcoming on the truck is a bigger change than any of this. So that's that guys, let's get this wheel and tire put back on the truck, everything torqued back down, but stick around for a few more seconds because I got something to show you. You guys ready for it? The moment everyone has been waiting for. Here we go. This right here. Full lock. Three and a half inch lift level at full lock. I can get about a finger and a half on the front side. Now the back side, which everyone's curious about, here we go. On the back side, I can get about a finger in there. So there's about one inch of clearance at the rear and about an inch and a half of clearance at the front. You do have to do a mini NorCal clearance mod. The mini NorCal is super simple. Custom Offsets has a, a really good tutorial on that. All you do is pull back the liner you cut a small notch on the ender fender here, take a hammer and push that back and it gives you another inch and a half of clearance. This used to sit out here and it would rub on this tire setup. And uh, now I have plenty of clearance. I have not once rubbed with this tire. 33 by 12 and a half. These are 10 inch wide wheels with a negative 24 offset. So you would think that these would rub quite a bit. And actually four wheel parts when I bought them told me that you can't put that on a truck, it will never fit. Well, hot four wheel parts fits absolutely perfect. Everybody loves it. So that is the one of the most common questions I get literally every day I get. All right, guys, we've got a drag race in the making. We have the legendary Lightning McQueen versus the Hennessy Exorcist Camaro ZL1. I really, really like this car. What do you think, guys? Does that look good in this spot? 
that's enough of me talking. We have so many good plans for this truck upcoming. The Rough Country kit is not gonna last too much longer on this thing. We're saving up some money. We are nearly at our budget we need to start tearing this thing apart once again to go absolutely nuts with it. You guys have no idea what I have planned for this. Actually, I think one or two of you have actually guessed it, but uh, most of you are completely wrong. So more stuff coming with this truck. I wanna thank you guys for tuning in today. If you have not subscribed to the channel yet, be part of the Lone Star Hawaiian family. Scroll down, subscribe below. Be sure to hit that notification bell. If you wanna follow me on Instagram, Lone Star Hawaiian on Instagram, get regular updates there and everything else we do on the channel before it drops in on YouTube. But as always, we'll see you in a few days for our next video. Until then, y'all take care and aloha.